During the 1960s, advanced military trainers evolved alongside complex fighter aircraft, demanding better pilot preparation. Amid the rush, a small German company named Rheinflugzeugbau, or RFB, embarked on an unconventional idea. They set out to build a jet that wasn't a jet at all. The fan trainer was a military trainer pretending to be a fighter jet by replacing the actual engine with a ducted fan behind the cockpit, an approach that offered jet-like agility at a reduced operating cost. So RFB created a fighter jet like no other, one that has fascinated aviation enthusiasts for decades and is looking to make a comeback. During the 1960s, fighter aircraft evolved into more intricate and costly machines. Consequently, a similar trend followed in the domain of advanced military trainers. Aircraft such as the Northrop T-38, the Mitsubishi T-2, and even the Sepikat Jaguar emerged in response to the escalating demands on new pilots. These aspiring aviators were required to navigate a significant leap in capabilities to attain the competence needed for flying. Therefore, this advancement in training also extended the capability gap further down the training timeline. The transition between pilots qualifying on small piston engine basic trainers and the now complex advanced jet trainers became a prominent concern. Still, this discrepancy prompted the development of a new class of jet trainer aircraft altogether. A modern initiative to bridge this gap led to the creation of aircraft like the Dornier Alpha Jet and the British Aerospace Hawk. However, a humble German aviation company would seek an alternative approach. Contemplating the idea of designing an aircraft that could offer the cost-effectiveness of a basic trainer while incorporating the handling characteristics of a jet, their ambitious innovation aimed to mitigate the abrupt learning curve for rookie pilots and allow air forces to streamline their trainer aircraft maintenance processes. The result would be a classic tandem two-seat cockpit arrangement inspired by the design of the Alpha Jet Trainer, but with a twist. Rheinflugzeugbau, or RFB for short, was a small but adventurous German company set up in the 1950s. They began their work with an original one-off pusher aircraft of their own making. Soon, it was time to push the envelope a bit farther. As modernity dawned, they ventured into the world of ducted fan propulsion systems. The company was fascinated by the idea of planes with built-in ducted fans. This curiosity quickly turned into action as they modified two gliders for flight tests. As the decade progressed, the incipient interest evolved into a concrete project. In 1970, the company recognized a need in the market for an innovative trainer aircraft, which they believed had the potential to exploit their own design style. They unveiled ambitious plans for a two-seat ducted fan military trainer, from then on known as the fan trainer. The overarching goal was clear, to engineer an aircraft capable of emulating the agility of jet-powered counterparts while remaining economically viable. Remarkably, the aircraft's distinctive feature was the placement of a ducted fan propeller behind the cockpit, situated in the middle of the fuselage. This innovation successfully replicated the flight characteristics of a jet aircraft by positioning the power plant midway, a departure from the conventional front-mounted power plants in other trainers. Besides, this revolutionary placement resulted in handling closely resembling that of operational jet aircraft. Moreover, these achievements were accomplished at less than a tenth of the operating and fuel costs associated with jet trainers. Admittedly, although the speed was notably slower than jet trainers, the design provided novice pilots with an authentic experience of jet handling right from the initiation of their basic flight training. Indeed, the concept itself appeared highly promising. The RFB fan trainer was recognized for its distinctive feature, a mid-mounted ducted fan propulsion system, an innovation claimed to offer performance on par with conventional jet propulsion while significantly reducing operational costs. When compared to its contemporary counterpart, the Dassault Dornier Alpha Jet, a jet-powered trainer aircraft, the fan trainer boasted a remarkable achievement. It consumed approximately one-tenth of the fuel. Furthermore, the fan trainer was presented as a cost-effective alternative, with RFB asserting that its procurement expenses were only one-fifth of those for the rival Cessna T-37 Tweet. Yet the model had a slightly slower top speed. Nevertheless, the fan trainer delivered comparable performance while consuming only a fraction of the fuel. Despite its merits, the primary target audience, the German Luftwaffe, did not express initial interest. Consequently, in 1973, RFB redirected its efforts towards creating a civilian touring model named the RFB Fan Liner. The civilian version served a dual purpose, to demonstrate the concept's viability and to generate interest. Certainly, the introduction of the RFB Fan Liner managed to pique the interest of the German Ministry of Defense. Recognizing the potential value in the concept, they took the initiative in 1975 to fund the construction of two prototype fan trainer aircraft. By March, 
RFB had secured a contract from the German Defense Ministry. The task at hand was the production and testing of two prototype fan trainers. These prototypes would undergo rigorous evaluation as potential substitutes for the Piaggio P-149 initial trainers within the Luftwaffe's fleet. Impressively, within seven months of initiating the endeavor, the first prototype was ready for testing. The fan trainer's design philosophy revolved around efficiency, cost reduction, and user friendliness. Notably, its engine control system employed a single lever mechanism, familiar to pilots accustomed to traditional turbojets, emphasizing ease of use. The innovative engine and fan setup featured a movable turbine, requiring meticulous fan speed control. The British Doughty Group's reduction gear reduced the engine's output by half, enabling optimal fan speed at 3,090 revolutions per minute, facilitating a five-bladed fan with noise reduction measures, such as Hoffman's plastic-coated wooden blades and a redesigned setup. Key design elements included a foam plastic rubbing strip for precise blade tip to shroud clearance, ensuring performance. The fan's ring slot design ensured smooth airflow even at high power and low airspeeds, adjusting asymmetrically for varied inflow during maneuvers. Structurally, the fan trainer featured a metal box keel for the forward fuselage, allowing flexibility in cockpit shape changes. The spacious cockpit housed extensive instrumentation and side consoles resembling operational Air Force aircraft, influenced by the Alpha Jet's design. Convenience of maintenance was a priority, achieved through modular systems grouped into detachable units. The forward swept wing, influenced by the LFU-205 experimental aircraft, addressed visibility concerns by avoiding wing root obstruction. Fuel efficiency was achieved with integrated wing fuel cells, with adjustable wing length and components like freeze ailerons and air brakes using advanced materials. The maiden flight of the inaugural prototype, registered as DEATJ, took place on October 27, 1977. Its power was derived from a pair of EA871, providing 150 horsepower NSU Vonkel engines. However, the EA871 engine installation encountered complications, prompting adjustments. Subsequently, the second prototype, DEATI, equipped with a single 420 shaft horsepower Allison 250 C20B turboshaft engine, completed its inaugural flight on the last day of May 1978. Tragically, the course of development was marred by an incident. On September 7, 1978, the second prototype suffered a crash that catalyzed modifications on the first prototype leading to its upgrade to the Fan Trainer 400 standard. The modifications included the installation of an Allison engine and refinements in the air intake system. As a result of the incident, the Luftwaffe subjected the Fan Trainer to meticulous evaluation, a comparative analysis involving the Beechcraft T-34C and Pilatus PC-7 turboprop-powered trainers. Despite the Fan Trainer's advantageous cost efficiency in both acquisition and operational aspects, and being regarded by some as the best option, the Luftwaffe opted to retain the Piaggio P-149, deeming it adequate for their training requirements. However, the absence of a Luftwaffe contract did not deter Rhein Flugzeugbau's aspirations. In May 1982, the company announced its intentions to initiate mass production of the fan trainer in the coming months. By then, the prototype had amassed an impressive 500 flight hours, including a noteworthy five-week marketing tour across America, during which the prototype averaged 6.5 flight hours a day. Although Rhein Flugzeugbau projected a potential demand for approximately 5,000 trainer aircraft over the subsequent decade, the company set a practical initial market share target of 4%, equating to 200 aircraft, acknowledging the distinctive nature of the fan trainer. Notably, enhancements continued. In 1983, the prototype underwent further refinement. The original seven-bladed ducted fan was replaced with a more streamlined five-bladed production standard counterpart. Cockpit improvements were also introduced, resulting in a notable reduction in noise and markedly improved external visibility. Following feedback from Luftwaffe trials and additional input, RFB decided to refine their fan trainer aircraft for better market appeal, resulting in the development of two main models, the fan trainer 400 and fan trainer 600. The fan trainer 400 model addressed previous complexities by replacing the twin Vankel engines with the more reliable Allison model 250 C20 turbine engine, generating 420 horsepower. In contrast, the Fan Trainer 600 model featured the more potent C30 engine, boasting 650 horsepower, enabling a top speed of around 418 kilometers per hour and over four hours of flight time. Both models embraced modular production, sharing an impressive 92% of components, streamlining manufacturing. However, their success is a subject of debate. The Thai Air Force found the concept of a versatile trainer appealing, ordering 31 Model 400 units in 1982 for primary training 
and 16 Model 600 units for pilots earmarked for their F-5E fighters. They even held options for 26 additional examples. The Thai FT-600's cockpit configuration was adjusted to mimic the F-5E, complete with ejection seats. Production involved two units in Germany and the rest assembled in Thailand using kits. Deliveries began in 1984, with integration into service in 1987. To withstand the tropical climate, Thai FT-400s were fitted with metal wings, transitioning from fiberglass. Unfortunately, this shift caused deployment delays due to complexity. The FT-400s faced operational issues during their shorter service life compared to the smoother performance of the FT-600s. Despite encountering numerous challenges, the successful sale to Thailand served as a catalyst for RFB to embark on further explorations in marketing. An ambitious proposal emerged, outlining the development of a Fan Trainer 1000 tailored for deployment in Paraguay. The vision for this aircraft extended its utility to function as a light attack platform. However, despite the initial enthusiasm, this failed to materialize, marking a setback for RFB. Undeterred by the previous obstacles, RFB persevered in their pursuits. During the mid-1980s, their aspirations took them to West Germany, where they sought a lucrative contract. Unfortunately, history repeated itself, as this effort, too, encountered stumbling blocks. Faced with reality, RFB opted for a strategic shift towards jet trainers. Collaborating with Rockwell International, they aimed to secure participation in the U.S. military's highly coveted JPATS program. This partnership yielded the Rockwell Ranger 2000, which culminated in another round of disappointment. Nevertheless, the repercussions of this outcome were somewhat mitigated by the subsequent closure of RFB's operations in 1992. Consequently, the prospects for the fan trainer in the commercial sphere dwindled. Moreover, the limited service it had provided to the Thai Air Force came to an end as the geopolitical landscape shifted in the post-Cold War era. The Thai Air Force found a more cost-effective solution in the form of surplus German Alpha Jets. However, the fan trainer refused to reach its conclusion just yet. Defying the odds, three units of the aircraft managed to remain operational. These sporadically made captivating appearances at air shows held across Europe, reminding enthusiasts of the aircraft's enduring legacy. In a surprising turn of events in 2010, a new player emerged on the scene, Fanjet Aviation, which acquired all the rights and manufacturing equipment associated with the fan trainer. Fueled by an unrelenting enthusiasm, Fanjet Aviation is ardently committed to resurrecting the production of the fan trainer. The revival plan includes the integration of modern enhancements, such as state-of-the-art glass cockpit instrumentation. Even so, the realization of this vision hinges upon their ability to secure new clients willing to embrace this unique aircraft for their training needs.